Hi there, ladies and gentlemen. This is George. And today I'll be talking a, a very interesting topic. Now, of course, when I was invited for this particular session, we talked about the downfall of cryptocurrency. What's next? Um, I wanted to kind of like reframe it and talk a bit about the state of the market. And is crypto actually dead? And the, what's happening right now? So before I go into that, just a quick introduction. Of course, my name is George Wong. Um, uh, more commonly, I'm known as the head of Singapore and Malaysia for the sandbox. The sandbox is the uh, one of the largest uh, decentralized metaverses or uh, virtual worlds in the market. And also I'm the CEO of Reactive Labs where I'm, I run an advisory. And I also do a bunch of other um, blockchain related associations. And if you have any questions regarding what I shared today, please do feel free to connect with me here. Now, some a bit of background. Besides doing, uh, at spending a, a lot of time in the crypto space since about 2016, 2017, I have been involved in a lot of different kind of financial related entities, like uh, you know, from stocks, um, property, precious metals, um, you know, funding, um, and also even like uh, uh, been and have a long career in MNCs as well. And the reason I highlighted these other positions that I've been in is to give you an understanding that I'm a person who is not just a crypto maxi. I have, a, uh, an, I believe I have a nice balance of traditional business, understanding financial markets, and also the crypto market as well, which gives me a more balanced insight and input. And I'm a big believer in fundamental and technical analysis. So I apply a lot of it in the crypto space. Now, a lot of people, myself included, have always maintained that fundamental and technical analysis is not something that is easily applied in the crypto market. It's not impossible, but it's definitely not something easy to apply because the time frame and the controls are very different. So let's take, for example, um, in a traditional stock market, you're looking at people trading at certain hours of the day. There is an off time and they don't trade on the weekends. So it doesn't trade 24 hours, but the crypto market trades 24 hours a day. And they, and it's a global trading marketplace. Like if you wanted to trade in the US market, you had to go to a broker who has access to the US market. And it's not so straightforward. Technology makes it easy, but you still have to go through that. And the ease of access is not so straightforward. There are some documents to sign if you want to trade the U.S. markets, which I do quite often as well. Um, and, um, and, and, and only then you gain access and you have to trade at U.S. hours. So, and, and I found myself when I was doing trading for U.S. market, I would trade at 10 p.m. And, uh, and because the main trading hours is between 10 to, let's say, like 5 a.m. So, and that's why a lot of people who specialize in trading the U.S. markets um, have to do the graveyard shift if they were to trade that actively as a day trader. Now, why is this significant? Because the crypto market trade 24 seven, everyone's trading on the same marketplace around the world. And as a result, um, the speed and the response time to news is also 24 seven, which theoretically just by the nature of it, because it trades 24 seven, even on weekends, you're looking at a market that is arguably going to react to anything three to four times quicker as a result of it. And information is also an issue because sometimes we get access to some information. Sometimes information is not clear. People react emotionally. So when a lot of trading is emotion driven, the volatility gets higher, right? It gets bigger. The euphoria is bigger. So the up rallies are stronger. The down rallies are also stronger. Now, I wanted to frame this in you because this is very critical when it comes to understanding the crypto market and why it's as bad as it is right now, right? And of course, when it comes to uh, controls, you know, um, it's it's uh, uh, trading. Uh, there are a lot of measures in the stock market that has been implemented that don't exist in the crypto market, right? So a lot of control mechanisms, a lot of the things that you see happening in the crypto market has actually been done before, like pump and dumps, etc. All these kind of mechanisms have been done before and uh, in the, 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 the traditional stock market, but there has been so many controls over the decades of experience in the markets to eliminate or reduce the impact of such um, uh, measures in the market, which doesn't exist in the crypto market, which is why pump and dump methods are now 
practiced heavily by those who used to probably do it in the stock market, but they now do it in the crypto market. So the, the lack of these kind of control mechanisms in the decentralized space has a big impact. Now, just looking at charts, I was going to give you a very quick overview. If you're a person who loves charts and you read charts like I do, this is just a very simple one. Um, the start of the year, the, the, we use Bitcoin as a reference because it's a, it's a pretty good indicator of the market. If you, and the price at the beginning of the year was around 48,000 US dollars. It wasn't the peak, but it was a pretty good price given the last bull cycle um, about 2017 was around 20,000 US dollars, right? So it's still pretty high. And then and it actually went through the news of the war, uh, the, the, the Ukraine-Russian war, uh, actually because there was a lot of capital flight, a lot of access to funds was very tricky. So actually, it caused a little bit of a, um, there was a lot of instability, but you will realize that because people were trying to get funds, donations were happening to Ukraine in the form of cryptocurrencies. So it didn't actually cause a crash, but the subsequent after it affects to the economy, the American economy, and to many of the major economy, you know, uh, fluctuating commodity prices, etc., uh, can be indirectly said to contribute to a bit of a downpour, um, or rather a significant one in uh, the early start of the year. Now, this is important because in, 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 in the traditional market, maybe the impact isn't so significant, but in the crypto market, people react very aggressively especially with the whole speed 24-hour trading. And this is a year where we saw three black swan events. So it's an unprecedented. Um, and although in the beginning of the year, I have expected the market to really crash. And that's kind of why I exited most of my positions beginning of the year. But And I was expecting Bitcoin to hit 20,000 when, when I was talking about it at hit this point. And a lot of people thought that was insane. But it even surpassed my expectation and that's largely due to the few black swan events right so you have of course the lunar crash and that which which wiped out about you know i read the impact was about 40 million of market capitalization values were gone as a result of that single two to three day crash of the the the, the terra luna and ust debacle and then most recently with ftx now, although the and FTX was about eight billion. Now, in many cases, both of these events were extremely significant because one was about a token that had a uh, that was poorly backed. The backing was not there, right? Uh, and uh, as a result, uh, people were dumping it quickly and it's so fast it went from like ninety dollars to like less than a dollar in a matter of like forty eight hours right? That this was history uh, that occurred overnight because you saw a token just go to almost zero uh, in, in that span of time, which has never happened in such a degree and such a, to such a large, at one point considered the fifth largest crypto, right? So that was something that is significant, but you know, the market kind of like, I wouldn't say accepted it. A lot of wealth was wiped out. A lot of people suffered greatly for it. But I think the bigger one was actually FTX because FTX as an institution that was backed by so many large uh, financial institutions, hedge funds, et cetera, for it to have mismanaged, although the degree in terms of values was a lot lower than the whole Luna uh, the scenario. But you could argue that the FTX in terms of the emotional impact to the market was a lot more severe because it was one of those companies which most people thought that was too big to fail. Like Luna was a token uh, which involved both the Luna token, the UST token, using an algorithmic back system to back the values of the token, which didn't really work. But the FTX, what you saw was a modern day bank run, right? Um, and in both cases, they reflected a loss of confidence in the market. Now this resulted all of this black swan events from war to Luna going to zero to FTX, a large, like second largest exchange in the world, collapsing just from abuse, uh, internal abuse or whatever the final outcome may be, caused the market to crash about 67% from the beginning of the year to the lows of about 15,000 US dollars. So it's bad, but is it the downfall of cryptocurrency? So that's where we are talking about. So if you look at a longer term chart, 
And uh, this is all the way to about 2017. Uh, prior to that as well, you would notice that the prices of Bitcoin has been volatile and the gains were insane. If you were to buy it at the beginning of 2017, the rally all the way up was about uh, 1,900%. And then it came down and then up another 328%. Then it came down then it went another 1,500 percent down 100 percent again so the volatility is large you do see a long-term low uh that's still going up from three to four to 15 if you look at it in the long-term chart so in uh even despite it being no doubt a bear market and i think that it's still going to be bad for a while but at the same time this has happened before you see uh, massive rallies and crashes occur whenever it comes to new technology. So one thing I want to highlight is that even in during the dot-com bubble uh, in 1999, 2000, um, you saw a lot of euphoria. People were buying into new technology. They were buying things that they didn't understand. And then subsequently uh, at the peak, then it crashed. A lot of people lost their money. You hear the same conversations you're hearing right now. And it's and occurs cyclically and frequently whenever it comes to new technology adoption because people get euphoric over new in the last round it was cryptos and then in this cycle it actually had closer relation to like nfts as a big driver as it brought in more new players into the market more companies looking at the technology in terms of the implementation if you realize despite the three black swan events that occurred people are still talking about it in the previous cycle, when the adoption rate hasn't gone to the current levels that it is right now, um, people were shunning cryptos, were shunning anything related to it. Events were empty. But even now, after UST uh, and Luna crash, after FTX, you're still having events which is packed out audiences or at least pretty filled um, in many parts of the world where crypto is still relevant because, um, which is most countries, even in Southeast Asia, simply because people understand the technology now way better than it was in the last cycle so when you look at this you have to understand that during this period when markets crash that's when the speculators leave that's where the people who work with emotional euphoria will leave the market and this is where the real business the real builders are building and this is not something i've never talked about before if you ask anyone, anyone who's asking me, I'm in an accumulation phase. I'm not speculating. I'm just accumulating. And I'm also focusing on building. That's why I have a big belief in the metaverse. It's something that I'm doing full time as well. And that's because I truly believe that right now we are in a bear and the bear is the best time to build. To draw parallels to the 1999.com bubble, the year 2000.com bubble era, the companies that built and continued to build over a 20-year cycle, okay, until today, are the Googles, Facebooks, the Amazons, all the main blue chip giant companies that survived the dot-com bubble, that understood that they were supposed to continue building, and they did, and are now, because technology takes time. Technology adoption is not something that occurs overnight. A lot of people don't understand. It takes a good five, maybe 10 years time before it becomes mainstream, before you stop questioning about whether or not the technology is relevant. Today, people are still questioning cryptos, but less. They start to understand and try to figure out how to work with it instead of like, oh, this thing is valueless, etc. right? And similarly with NFTs, it's new, people got excited. I'm still excited about it because of the technology. And we are looking at now the market who's still around, who's still building, is going to take this technology and push it forward, maybe in three years, five years, 10 years, I don't know the time frame, but when it becomes mass market adopted, that is when um, you know, people are, are, are who stop questioning the technology, that's when you will see, will come out of this building phase and they'll go up. So time, I don't know. Sometimes even if you see the up, it may not have been fully adopted, but that it's the adoption rate is just going higher and higher and that's when giant companies giant businesses work so if you ask me cryptocurrencies is low it's a bear but is it a downfall will people stop using cryptos entirely i think certain cryptocurrencies would die out like i'm 
personally not a fan of Bitcoin. I'm more of an ETH maxi or any of the other coins because I think the tech is better because I'm very focused on tech and I think Bitcoin is a bit dated, there's environmental concerns, etc. It's still just the current reference. Maybe in a year or three years from now, if it's if if it loses relevancy and being replaced by something else, I would probably show a different chart, but I don't think the story would change because you must know that Bitcoin is just one of the choices of the cryptocurrencies. It could change. It could still maintain to be the store of value. That's the part that it's very hard to say what the mass market would kind of um, like deviate or diverge if they don't adopt Bitcoin as the primary store of value. It still is, but if you notice compared to the rest of the coins in the market, it's not as dominant as it used to be. It went from like 80% of the market was Bitcoin. I think now it's like 40%. So after a while, I think it'll be phased out. It's just a question of when. But to, for in terms of what's next and what's coming, now obviously a lot of businesses are struggling, uh, but now those who are building, they are uh, the key driver for the next few years, especially in this industry is really um uh those companies that's looking to develop on web tree technology decentralized technology using blockchain for decentralization i think ftx was a proof that the market needs decentralization in terms of uh, uh design or structure because ftx is even though it's crypto based it's an example of how centralized control centralized abuse in so much money in the in the control of just maybe like two or, or a small group of people has lost eight billion of of, of investor value overnight um, in the span of like two days or something like that, and that's because it's centralized. So rather than say that it's a downfall of cryptocurrency, FTX is an example of why decentralized technology is important because it helps to reduce these kind of risks that you would not get in the decentralized exchange. So, and a lot of people building in Web3 who understand the tech will continue to build better and better solutions. And that will be one of the primary drivers in the coming years. The other, like I've already mentioned to me is the growth of metaverse. Um, metaverse is not new. Um, if a lot of people think that it's a new concept, but besides the concept being 20 years old, it's actually estimated that more than 80% of millennials, Gen Zero, the younger generation, are already in some form of metaverse. They just don't call it the metaverse and it may not necessarily have blockchain implemented in it. But for us and for me personally, the rise of blockchain enabled as digital assets in the metaverse is the game changer. Whatever form it is, whether it's like this, which is the sandbox, very user generated content type of metaverse, or if you're looking at whether it's VR, AR, whatever your, your flavor of metaverse, that will be a huge, huge driver moving forward. And that's where I'm putting a lot of my personal effort into as I too am building for the future, right? And I see massive potential in this. The next thing, um, well, it's this actually a video, it's not showing a little bit of a clip, but it's, uh, <clears throat> it's actually the jobs that will be created as a new jobs that'll be created as a, a convergence between blockchain tech and also metaverse technology. Uh, our metaverse experiences because the the metaverse provides a new ex, uh, dimension or access into the space it provides um uh, a new ways of interaction it creates new kind of jobs you see jobs in terms of designing of um you know virtual assets from gamers to even experiencing like uh, tour guides in the metaverse for for like a historical site that's built into the metaverse there's so many different um opportunities job opportunities as as it creates more jobs it creates more interest and that's where i think it will also be a driver especially as we enable these new jobs and that's also something that i hope to participate and be a part of and i do advise many companies on considering all these factors as well. And the sky's the limit because the metaverse is a parallel virtual world. There is so many opportunities that you can find in the metaverse itself. So with that, I hope it gives you a bit of insight. Just a quick summary. What I, I truly believe is that A, the market is bad. Know that three black swans is probably too painful for most of the market to bear and the, and, and the year still has about a month to go, right? Um, but 
it's not something that will wipe out the industry completely, especially if you focus on the technology, the adoption of technology, the good adoption of technology, the propagation of good technology uh, and builders. And you back these kind of entities, these kind of experiences, I, I, I truly believe that uh, we will come back again, cyclical into a, a, a bull market again. At some point, there will be a trigger. There will be some kind of new tech innovation that will drive euphoria in the market again. With the, the, the way crypto works, the speed it works, there would be potential crashes. But that comes with the territory. And if I, I advise you and encourage you to look beyond the, the price of the token, to not get too excited when people are very excited and, that, and not to get too bearish when people are bearish because that is and we have to learn to be a bit contrarian in the market in, and lastly for me i'm obviously in the accumulation stage i it's i don't know if it's the bottom but i know it's pretty bad and bad is always a buying opportunity for me as a trader and i have a longer time horizon than most people i'm not investing for a quick flip in six months i'm, I'm investing to technology holding it for the long term and and definitely hoping to benefit from it from like three five or ten years later Right. So do, do think about your time horizon as well if you're looking to be an investor in this space. With that, I hope this has been slightly insightful with the limited time I have. Thank you so much. And I do hope to see you in person. Thank you.